Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today I'm bringing you a review for the new Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Deluxe Class Runamuck. Runamuck is number 37 in the series, and he's part of the third deluxe wave for Earthrise. Final deluxe wave, in fact. The supposed fourth wave has apparently been canceled, and I think it was just uh, redistributed to different exclusives and all that. Runamuck is naturally going to be the mold mate of Runabout, his more or less twin Battle Charger character. And that will be Target exclusive, which again, I assume was probably meant to be in the fourth wave, but who knows? I don't think Hasbro will ever tell us either way. And I have to say, he was one of the third wave guys that I, I wasn't super excited for because the pictures didn't really do him justice. And I think a lot of that is just kind of the whitewashing effect because it was plastic, you lose detail on the photography. But luckily, you can see he's actually really full of sculpted detail here. He doesn't feel cheap or, you know, overly simple. So I'm, I'm starting to warm up to him. Of course, I haven't even opened it yet. So we'll find out for sure once I get him open. Uh, but if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at the toys packaging. We'll open it up. We'll see Runamuck's map piece, his instructions. And we'll see the character in both his vehicle and robot modes. I don't really have anything to compare him to, unfortunately. This is my first time getting either a Runamuck or Runabout toy. So... Not sure about the group shots. Maybe I'll do Sunstreaker and Wheeljack because they have similar engineering. I don't know. We'll see. But then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So Runabout comes in your standard Earthrise Deluxe packaging. Got your logos and branding, the name, number, character himself, who takes up a good chunk of the box. A bit shorter than Sunstreaker was, but I think he's supposed to be, right? Battle chargers weren't ever particularly big. And you can see this pretty decent artwork of him on the side. Definitely like this more than Sunstreakers. I didn't like that one. Just, I don't know, it was off to me. This works a little bit better. I like the dynamic, like, clutching of the hand he's doing as he's firing. Nice touch. And we bring it around back. You can see the renders for Run Amuck in both the vehicle and robot modes. It takes 16 steps to transform. So, decently complicated. That's nice. And he does come with a little accessory. So, at least he's got some way to defend himself. All right, now here's our map piece for the figure. And see, it's got this little insignificant little planet here. Nothing special, but let's take a look at what it is. Oh, it's us. <laughs> so finally, in the Earthrise toy line, we get the planet Earth on our universal map piece. So there it is. Way smaller looking than the rest of them. I don't know if that means the other planets are supposed to actually be bigger. Or if, like, this just shows that Earth is shown from a further distance. I don't know. But you can see Saturn over there. I don't know what that is. The moon, maybe. Some stuff going on. And I guess it's kind of fitting that Earth would be on this character's toy because he was the fan vote figure for Earthrise. I don't know if that played a part in the decision or not, but maybe. Then here's the instruction book. And you know, it's funny, the pose for this render is almost the exact same one that Sunstreaker had. Just gun out, squatted, looking up. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Over here you can see the tech specs for the figure. This shows you uh, how to put a gun in a hand if you need help with that. And then you got your transformation from robot to vehicle mode. And result, and then the how-to for the universal map piece. And that's that. And here we have Runamuck's vehicle mode. And you can see it's just this nice white and gold sports car. Uh, very reminiscent of the original Toys vehicle mode. But it's got a lot of really just simple yet effective detailing. See the kind of molded lines and everything going around here. Doesn't have painted headlights. Painted like the top here, but not the headlights. That's weird. Got this nice little bit of etched detailing in the windshield. It's reminiscent of Sunstreakers, but this one you can actually see through. Back windshield has the same thing going on, just a lot of etching, a lot of tech detail, that's nice. And then along the side, you get kind of like some door trim, you get the handles. On this side of it, you actually get the little gas cap, so that's neat. The wheels, luckily, are not the peg through cheapo wheels that we've been seeing on some toys lately. Got full rims, they're painted white, they look nice. The taillights are painted, so there's that. And he does have these nice molded exhaust pipes, though. Again, they're white like the rest of it. Underside, fairly clean. 
you can see a uh, fake windshield on the bottom. So you already know this is getting real, real cheaty, real masterpiece like. And if you look closely, you can see fake wheels down here. So a lot of fake parts on this guy. Um, if you've seen my reviews before, you know that I'm not a huge fan of cheating transformations and using like faux vehicle or animal parts. But I understand the aesthetic they're going for and really it just comes down to execution. Like Sunstreaker uses fake headlights on his feet, oddly enough, but it works well enough because you don't have other car kettle jetting out elsewhere and kind of breaking the illusion. So we're gonna see how this guy kind of compares. On the top here, you can see he's got his little blaster weapon that can unpeg, fairly tight because of the paint on this piece. And, you know, it looks a lot like his original one. You'll see that there's a hole in the back. And this isn't just some random hole put there for, like, compatibility or something. There's actually a reason for this. The upcoming Runabout toy has a second weapon that can plug into the back of this to emulate the long rifle that the original toy comes with. Uh, I think it's kind of a shame this guy didn't come with that also, but, you know... They do crazy things for accuracy. They will actually omit parts and accessories for screen accuracy or toy accuracy, so go figure. But overall, yeah, the vehicle mode is very nice looking. It's pretty much entirely dumped in this white matte finish, which does lend a very 80s car feel to it. And has no issue rolling, despite everything that has to tuck underneath. So I'd say the vehicle mode is very successful. Now for the transformation. If you haven't already, remove his accessory and just set it aside there. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna lift this back section up. So we're just gonna kind of wriggle it free like so. Get it up there. And you wanna get your nails or something up underneath this windshield area, kind of pop it off, and it's all gonna swing up on this hinge. And with these back wheels, you're gonna fold them in. You're gonna tuck away as we cheat some transformation. Kind of fold it up against the windshield area. You're gonna Pop his arms free from the sides of the vehicle. This tab in right there, like so. Bring these little hinge things down. Let's go ahead, open up the fake windshield chest. Again, not a fan of. Get the head out, it's on a little panel here. May have an issue getting the clearance you need to pull it out because tight fit. But let's get it out, close the chest up, push this down like so. Let's go ahead, rotate the arms. You can swing his fists out. Like this. I'm gonna rotate the entire lower half. We're gonna grab these little fake wheel panel things here, pull them out a bit. And then we're gonna swing the front section of the car forward like this, to make feet. And you're going to use this little double hinge assembly on the knees. Swing all this down. Make sure these black hinges plug into these white panels here. Like so. Separate the feet. All right, almost there. And the last thing you want to do is use this double hinge to push this little backpack assembly up. And you're going to need it to tab into these little shoulder hinges. And this piece just want to make sure that these little nubs right here go into these slots. Get it to be nice and flush. All right, let me just get your guy posed. Give him his weapon. It voila, it's run amok. Here he is. Now I gotta say, this guy looks really, really cool. He has just really neat little proportions. Makes him kind of like a little bruiser type. And the posability, of course, is pretty much on point. You got the head on a ball joint. Pretty tight one, so he can't look up and down much. You got the uh, universal shoulders, so they go out, up and down, all that. Bicep swivel, single bent elbows that, unfortunately, don't even break a full 90. No wrist articulation because of the transformation. Full waist swivel, which is nice. Universal hips. They don't go back very much because of clearance, but they go forward pretty high. Single bend knees. You can kind of get a double bend if you 
break the hinge free, but it doesn't really bend in a good place and looks weird. And then he's got full ankle tilt and ankle rocking. So very dynamic little guy. Now, things I don't like about this. One, the, again, obvious cheated transformation, right? You got the fake wheels here, which, you know, they exist to emulate the fact that the original toy, uh, all four of the car wheels are on the bottoms of his feet because of the way he transformed. So they wanted to emulate that and also give him some heel support. So they give him fake wheels here, which they could have at least painted, you know, and the real ones tuck away up here. Now, luckily, they're pretty much completely out of sight. But then the one that gets me is the windshield, right? You have an obvious windshield on his back and a mini windshield on his front. And again, we're getting into modern masterpiece territory and it's just not an approach I'm fond of. You know, we're all about doing whatever it takes for screen accuracy, even if it means the transformation doesn't make any sense. Like why would Runamuck have a windshield on his chest if the actual windshield from his car tucks away on his back, you know? But it's what they're going for. Now I will say compared to some other approaches to the fake transformations, he pulls it off better. At least everything, you know, tucks away well, pretty flush. I mean, he has the big backpack, but he's supposed to, right? It was designed that way to emulate the way the character originally looked. So you're not gonna hit him on that. He's supposed to have a big old tall backpack. Um, Posability again is fantastic. The other issue I have with this is the very empty uh, backs of the legs here. It didn't include any kind of panel to fold over to close this up, so it's just all open. You can see the hinges. He's one of those guys that you really want to pose from the front. And from the front, he does look good. So the toy's not perfect by any means. Uh, a lot of room for improvement, methinks, and I'm not a fan of the approach they took. But I will say they did nail the cartoon aesthetic. I mean, they wanted a cartoon accurate battle charger and they really gave us one. All right, here's a quick group shot with some toys that they don't share any parts with each other, but they carry the same overall aesthetic and they're all from Earthrise. So on the left you have Wheeljack and over here on the right you get Sunstreaker. And I just kind of grouped these together because they all share the same general motif, right? They have the flat windshield chest, they have the um, car hood feet going on. And they all have just kind of that same boxy build to them. Now it's interesting because Runamuck's proportions make him seem like a very short squat character. But when you look at him, he's actually slightly taller than the other two. That's something that kind of surprised me. The battle chargers aren't usually depicted as being very big. But in this case, yeah, he's actually got a little bit of height on Wheeljack and Sunstreaker who are generally seen as, you know, kind of more lean, tall characters. So that's a bit of a surprise. All right, now, what are my final thoughts on this toy? Uh, normally you'd say like an A for idea, but F for execution. I kind of feel the opposite way here. Again, I, I really hate the fake transformation thing. I, I really wish we'd get away from this approach. Yeah, you may get toys that don't have the exact same proportions they have in the you know 1980s cartoon, but their transformations would mean something, you know? <laughs> like, it just doesn't make sense for him to have wheels on his feet when they're on his back and a windshield on his chest when that's on his back. It, you know, not a fan. However, despite all that, he ends up working out really well. From just an overall design perspective, the only thing I dislike about his robot form is the, the empty legs in the back. That's something that could have been remedied with just, you know, an extra panel or two, but I guess they decided to keep the cost down, just leave it open like that. That's a shame, right? Because none of these other guys suffer from that, right? They got full legs. I mean, of course, that's because their legs transform differently. They swing out to the sides instead of folding up, but, you know. Overall, I, I really like this toy, despite the obvious flaws and my personal disagreement with the design philosophy. I can't deny he looks good for most angles. I mean, I've never really cared much for the battle chargers, but... I really enjoy this and it's got me excited for Runabout. So personally, I think, yeah, now that wave three starting to hit, I think you should pick this guy up. He's a lot of fun to transform. Uh, nothing about the transformation is difficult. All the parts are easy to move around and lock into place. 
It's got great posability, great tolerances, just a very solid transformer overall. And I will say seeing his like bleached white colors next to Wheeljack really makes me hate the fact that they gave Wheeljack such a like dingy color scheme. He looks so much better with whites more like this, but oh well, we're just gonna get dirty Wheeljack. All right, but now that I've said my piece on it, what I really want to know is what you all think. Do you plan on picking up Runamuck? Does he scratch that itch for you for the Battle Chargers? Do you like the transformation? Do you prefer the screen accuracy over, I guess, transformation integrity? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like, let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the new Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Runamuck. And with all that said, I will see you next time.